Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, uh, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 366. Uh, each week we meet here to answer the questions asked, or at least review the questions uh, asked and answered on the Dumb uh, SEO Questions uh, Facebook group. Uh, with us tonight, we have uh, David Roseham. David is a leading internet marketer. He's based uh, in West Sussex, uh, down on the sunny sunny bottom coast of uh, uh, the UK. I can, I can see some sunshine streaming through the window, David. Um, That's the window I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> you can find David at uh, davidrosam.com and Chameleon Marketing. Um, Richard Hearn uh, is based uh, in Thailand. Uh, uh, he's uh, CEO of redcardinal.ie and uh, he's been around longer than God. And uh, um, yeah, he's with us, with us tonight. We are very fortunate. And we're very, very fortunate to have uh, Micah fisher Kirshner. Micah uh, lives on the uh, east coast of the USA. No, the west coast, sorry. Um, not too far from Silicon Valley. Uh, he's also the uh, um, chairman of a, uh, an SEO meetup group. Uh, is, is, that, is that part right? Yeah, president, but yeah. Oh, president, there you go. Gee, I would, gee, if I was in America, I wouldn't call myself president. <laughs> uh, dear. And Tim Kappa uh, is um, CEO of onlineownership.com. Uh, he is uh, um, based in Corby, um, about uh, 100 miles north of London. All right. Um, let's have a look at our uh, first question. Um, it's um, titled, How Long Does It Take to Rank These Days? Um, can tell me, somebody tell me the, uh, the, um, oh, don't tell me my server's going to, going to get stuck tonight. Goodness me. Um, there we are, we got there. Goodness me. Okay. 42 days. It takes it takes 42. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it's totally uh, varied. There's so many uh, variables that can go with that, depending on you know, your, your, how well known your site is, how big the site is. Um, it, yeah, the how easily crawlable your site is. Um, you know, it, there's 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 factors that play into this. It could be immediate, if you you know, right away, or it can take quite a while if you're you know, some small page that you haven't linked to, and you have a million page website, and it may just you know, take a while. So um, there's no direct answer really for that. It it it's extremely variable. Th thank you, uh, Micah. Um, I've just put a link to that uh, URL you were looking for, Richard, uh, in the chat. Um, okay. All right. Um, where's Ryan's photo? Um, uh, David, Roseanne? Okay. All right, let's go um, on to the next. Uh, this one um, um, from Malik Yusuf. Uh, how do you guys schedule content posting? Uh, we don't. Um, he was reading a popular marketer's blog and he said uh, that Google doesn't like uh, a fixed schedule. Some say um, to ready and publish at least 
25 articles when launching a site or a blog. Some say to publish 70% of content at the start when launching. Uh, let's assume we post most of the articles, uh, e.g. Uh, 150 uh, at the very start of the first month. Is that going to create a problem? No. Um, for example, the Google Sandbox. Um, uh, Google is thinking I'm going to game the system. Doesn't happen. Which content schedule do you follow that is successful or advice to follow? I mean, what's the right approach? I'm getting mixed responses on this question and so highly confused. Um, can somebody give um, uh, Malik uh, some clarity on this one? Um, yes. I, um, I I don't think there's any problem with um, with posting once a week or uh, once a day or once every 13 days or whatever it is that you like doing. Um, I just don't think it's an issue. But uh, obviously this, um, this popular marketer thinks otherwise. Um, you're going to have to take advice from lots of people and then make your own judgment to this. I think it's, uh, I think that's bad. Um, that, that's, that's bad advice. I don't believe that's the case. And I, I liked on the 70% business. Um, I like to have a certain amount of, uh, of content. Um, when I, when I go live with a client site, um, but then I like to, to feed it with, with nice new content from time to time, keep the thing going, uh, see how the, the content is working, see how, how the customers are responding to it, um, rather than stick it all in there and say, well, that's it. Um, it's gone, you know. So I think um, I'm... I, I don't think I under I don't think I'm in agreement with the popular marketer. I think Michael Martinez has got a pretty pretty uh, pretty right as he usually does. In fairness, he's a clever guy, but you have to assume that Google does look at some engagement stats for any site that it's going to rank. So obviously, you do want to be adding new content over time because you want to be engaging with people and you want people to be visiting your site and potentially linking to your site. So um, it, it depends on what the type of site is. There are some sites where they would be just building a content uh, portfolio. It's not something like a new site. They'd have a, a set number of articles they're going to build, and that's it. And if that's the case, maybe they can just release it all at once. But if you're going to be releasing over time, then, yeah, stagger your release so that you're... Google can see that you're active and they can see those engagement figures and listen to what Michael Martinez said. I, I give a good example, by the way, I work with a couple of news sites and one of them is a national news site and they release about 60% of all their, their daily content at a minute past 7 a.m. every day. And that's just normal. That's just the way it works because the way the news cycle works. So uh, I can guarantee that Google doesn't look, look in any negative way on that at all. Thank you, Richard. Okay, Micah, uh, thank you very much uh, for your contribution. We'll see you shortly. Sorry, it's quick. Gotta go. <laughs> Meetings. Yeah, okay, mate. Thank you very much. I forgot to mention, uh, Micah is uh, head of uh, SEO for Turn River Capital in, in the United States. Um, okay, so thank you. Uh, have we covered Malik's question? Um, I'd like to echo what R Richard said. Michael Martinez uh, has his finger on the pulse and uh, um, certainly uh, must be listened to. All right, let's um, move on to number three on our run list. Philip Rinaldi uh, said, uh, I'm trying to create a schema card for myself when someone searches my name on Google. 
Does anyone have experience with this? I've attached an example. So far, I've purchased a domain name for my name, uh, um, https for colon slash slash www.philiprinaldi.com. And I've created the page using schema markup for person. Is there another thing I should be uh, focusing on or is this totally out of my control? I was thinking that uh, I should um, uh, start backlinking efforts to get some domain authority. Okay, so that's the photo of Neil Patel. Um, yeah, so um, just by using schema markup on your um, on your site, um, it's not going to give you your actual, um, you know, your 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 knowledge panel for a, a, as a person. Um, I honestly don't think that links either are going to do anything for you. This is more. Um, this is more of an understanding of the person. Um, and uh, 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 understanding of the person and who they are <laughs> um, and what Google can attribute to them from what they find uh, online. So if Philip Rinaldi is publishing um, a lot of content under his name in well-respected, depending on whatever it is, um, uh, you know, um, under that name, then th that entity will become recognized and that's when it's going to, um, you know, start displaying it. Thank you, Tim. All right, uh, let's um, move on to uh, question four. This uh, question... Uh, um, gave rise to a little bit of interest um, through the week. Um, yeah, any comments on this one? Yeah, so I, I um, gave my two cents on this. Now, I looked at this and uh, what was it? It was um, furniture. Uh, it was furniture something, furniture building, furniture put together uh, in San Diego, assembly, San Francisco. Assembly, assembly. Yeah, furniture assembly in, um, maybe it'll actually, my search will remember. <laughs> oh yeah, it was, was it in San Francisco? It was San, I think it was San, San Francisco. Uh, um, so th this was the first thing that 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 struck me. Okay, um, is this is a massive, massive local dominated, um, uh, locally dominated search result. You've got LSA in the top, which is local search advertisers, which is linked to your GMB, which is the Google guaranteed, right? Then you've got, um, well, there's, you know, there's another ad in between that. Then you've also got um, your local pack. And then eventually you hit the, you, you know, you hit the organic. Now, um, for your, you know, you say you're 35 a month, 35 organic visits a month. Well, uh, you know, without checking on what, uh, what, the sort of average search results on that are that kind of potentially is, sounds right to me because users that want this finished assembly are either going to be looking at the LSA or they're going to be looking at the three pack. They typically aren't going to go down, especially when the first couple of organic results are yell and shit like that. Um, they are typically all going to be using your local. So your LSA or your local pack. Um, that's where I'm going to guess that the majority of your traffic and leads and phone calls are going to come from. 
Um, obviously, I can't say for sure, but that's where I guess it's going to come from. And that's where I would really start concentrating on um, getting myself into. I'd really start working on my um, optimizing my GMB. I'd include that into my site. I know you've got like in the middle, it just says view my Google reviews, which then takes them to to your, your business listing. But I would really adopt a more local SEO kind of um, mindset for this for um for improving your actual gmb so you want to you want to get that appearing within the local pack and you could you know um you you could sign up for lsa uh you bear in mind you can turn those on and off turn those off as as and when required um you will have to jump through a few hoops with that you know with lsa you need to be um additionally verified uh, by Google uh, to get the Google guarantee on that. Um, they will need your, obviously your business licenses. They will double check those, et cetera, et cetera. It's, um, it's, it's fairly quick, but it's, it's quite intensive. And of course that doesn't just apply to you. That applies to anyone you employ. They also do, um, do, uh, you know, criminal record checks on all of that kind of stuff. But that, that is a very quick way. Um, and you can even set your own budget um, on how much you're prepared to pay for a lead. But you will then start appearing in LSA. Um, but I would really look at a more local centric, uh, local SEO kind of um, strategy uh, to get your GMB within that, within that three pack, um, which is going to be, I think, where the majority of your traffic and leads are going to come from. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? Tell me, Tim, could his own website have any impact on how he's going to rank in local results? Yeah, totally. So when I say a local SEO strategy, so like the thing is, yes, um, Firstly, I would be looking at uh, a better format um, uh, for the site, a uh, better layout for that. Um, I would be concentrating a lot more on local specific kind of information. Um, there was a lot of, like, I did look at his GMB, but I did look and I did look at a lot of his posts, which doesn't really provide information to the users. Um, so, and so, so the thing you need to like, he was he was posting things on. Yeah, I'll put together sort of an IKEA shelf, IKEA shelf in, um, and it was not very clear language, as well as if you were. If someone actually work, walked into your shop, and um, and you could you couldn't say anything else to them apart from how you presented that product in like for instance that post or on your site, um, would you make the sale? So you need to be really clearly explaining what what your different services are. Now, obviously, furniture assembly that is just one service, but I would probably break it down into. <laughs> you know, I would probably break it down into, um, um, I, I'm guessing majority would kind of be IKEA stuff. Um, but I, I would probably even look at an IKEA page with um, some of the smaller or bigger jobs that you've done and create like a folder, uh, a page with, with um, little folders in it, you know, case things. So... Pick like, I don't know, a big bookshelf, a big one. Um, then give them some ideas. Typically this, you know, this IKEA bookshelf, and you can even list a few of their names within this kind of size would potentially take, you know, four hours to put together, blah, blah, blah. Um, something like that. Do you take away the packaging, the boxing? You know, give the, give the required information. 
um, that, you know, and how you provide the service to the smaller ones. So someone knows, oh shit, it's just a little coffee table. And you know, like literally, hey, that thing's like six screws. I can, I can have that done for you in 25 minutes. The charge for this would be X amount. Um, and I don't know, are there any other ones in San Francisco that you come across, like furniture stores that also send flat pack that you see a lot of? You know, there could be another brand. Well, why don't you create a brand for that one? Same again, you know, a couple of different selections to give customers the ideas. But at the same time, now you're starting to branch out into people going, Ikea Furniture Assembly or Joe Bob's Furniture Assembly. You're starting to really break it out rather than just because people, you know, search for, for a lot of different things. Jim, you've changed the screen. Yeah, um, thank you, mate. And, and in local, people typically don't just go and think, ah, furniture assembly. Somebody's going to type in large IKEA, they might even use the name, Bravos Gosh Gosh, Schniggle Schnoggle, you know, um, uh, how to put it together. And boom, you know, they've typed that in. Yeah, it might only get searched once a month, but that is that is a total sale because you have just exactly provided the information to that. Yeah, I was um, gonna say like how to, how to FAQ and FAQs. It seems like it's 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 dying for some of that stuff as well, where people can't put it. Yeah, together. totally. They're a perfect target. Totally. This guy. Yeah, people get too hung up with oh, that what they think is like yeah, that is your main service, but you know you need to intercept or create content to to intersect people searching. They don't wake up and go furniture assembly because that is the end of the, the the road they will typically end up searching three or four more different things you know before they think oh shit you know i want someone to come and put up my you know uh, my xyz ikea or whatever other companies uh thing because they're having a bit of a pain in the ass with it or the husband's gone on a business trip and she wants it done and put up now or whatever or vice versa, you know, <laughs> the wife could be the one that puts it all together and he just doesn't have a clue. So, yeah, do you know what I mean? So really start thinking about what users are searching for rather than just, you know. And, of course, um, that is also going to provide a lot more information and will also help with the local, uh, with your GMB. Tell me one quick question. What about NAP? What about your name, address, phone number on your website? If you don't have the same information as you're going to try and put into your local listing, is it going to have an impact? Yeah, um, not as much these days. However, his local listing, quite rightly, was marked as a service area business. Okay. Um, and over the last, was probably uh, probably about a year now. Um, in your dashboard, when you mark yourself as a service area business, your address used to stay in the back end and it would just kind of flip it to say this is the service area business what they've done now is to make it more of a level playing field they actually delete your address once you've verified it and you've set your service area business so um in theory that gives equally a local playing field to a service area business saying he serves San Francisco to someone who's actually in San Francisco. Okay. Um, however, there's not a lot of, you know, when you're building out yourself, if you're looking for listings, local citations and directories, 90% um, of them all want your address anyway. So it's still really good to, like, it, to either have it in your footer. Um, you know, it should certainly be in your contact page because people want to feel comfortable who they're dealing with. Uh, they might want to do a quick search. Uh, if you're running LSA, they will certainly uh, want your address. Um, so it, 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 is, it is a form of, you know, just even if you're a service area business, it should certainly be on your contact page. Um, and of course, if you're using directories, that kind of nap is going to marry up. So Google's going to go, yeah, 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 you know, this is the business. That's the business. We can find that information on his website. And, oh, look, he's actually got a listing which is running across all pages. 
That's why, you know, I would recommend putting it into your footer rather than just having your one link in your actual homepage saying Google reviews. I would rather say, you know, um, uh, view us in Google um, and have a, have a link running site-wide to your CID uh, URL uh, rather than a shared URL. Um, so it's a direct correlation between, or it's a direct link between Google seeing your information in directories. They can find that information on your site and they're going, ah, yeah. So people are talking a lot more about this. There's a lot more uh, authority towards this business and therefore we're going to, you know, be a little bit more favorable in this positioning. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? All right, I think, I think we can call that a wrap for uh, David uh, Gizzarelli. I hope um, he finds that useful. All right, uh, here's one from Colleen Shellcross. Uh, Should I close the Google My Business account? Uh, Colleen said, uh, hello, and thanks for this group. Uh, I have a dumb SEO question. USA Full Colin, uh, a business that is online only. Someone set them up with a Google My Business profile and added the US uh, on the map uh, as the service uh, industry. I was under the impression that Google My Business is only for local and to work on a knowledge panel uh, for online business, businesses. Um, it's a service-based business that happens over the phone and Zoom. Um, should I close that Google My Business account? Will, will it look like her business was closed down? Should I keep it so she can get reviews? What is the protocol here? Okay, so... Um, and so if we're going to get really picky with the guidelines, um, that sounds to be like an online-only business. Um, therefore, you, you, it shouldn't have been created. Now, I mean, you just say over the phone in Zoom. Now, I mean, uh, like, is it literally online only? Um, do you never, ever meet customers? So th this is a question you need to kind of decide. Um, it, you know, if you drop a link, if you drop a link uh, in, in this and tag me in, um, if you want it removed, I can certainly um, get the, the team to look at it uh, and, and get it removed, um, being online only. But, you know, um, I'm guessing that business address is registered <coughs> um, in the States. Um, if you work from home, then yeah, you're going to have to set it as a service area business. But then again, if this was marked as your actual um, head office, it, it, you don't want to have it as a service area business. So, look, the choice is yours, essentially, what to do. I think, you know, personally, if uh, you are literally online only, you work from home, a home address, it's not an actual head office of, of, of a company, I think it probably looks a bit naff, to be honest with you, and I would probably have it removed. However, if it is an actual business premises, I would have that address listed because that address is more than likely going to be on your um, on your uh, DBA, you know, I, I mean, on your on your on your business registrations that are visible public publicly visible anyway. Uh, it will therefore be in your contact page, and you could just actually list your have your address listed, remove the service area business, and just mark it as a head office. That way, it's more brand building uh, rather than anything else. When somebody searches for your brand, they can see you've got your head office. They not necessarily don't want to come to you because 
the the actual business itself dictates it's all over the phone or whatever uh but you've got a head office it it provides a little bit more authority, but really is the, the choice is up to you on what kind of a brand you're trying to present uh, online. But um, yeah, if, if you want it, if you want to remove, drop me a link to it. Um, and then I can take a look if it's been verified, you should you it won't be able to be removed, you would need to uh, log in yourself um, and remove that out of your dashboard. That, that removes the connection uh, between an owner and then it becomes unverified and then it can actually physically be deleted by the team. If it's owned, it can't be. So you would, if you wanted to go down that road, you need to uh, delete it out of your dashboard. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? All right, let's um, move on to the next. Um, this one is from Sarah Adams, looking for some advice on what to choose for the URL. Um, she went on just to ask, um, uh, looking for some advice, insight or examples of multi-brand websites. Because of many reasons, the website is going to combine a bunch of brands. There will be a global navigation, and then if the users choose, uh, individual branded sub navigations if someone wants to navigate the site by sub brand uh, best advice on what to choose for the url since uh, people can get to an article by global navigation or by individual sub brand na navigation um, the uh, url would um, uh, be domain.com slash topic slash article or domain.com slash brand uh, slash topic slash article. Thanks. Let's point out um, the efforts of people like Michael Martinez uh, um, that we see. Um, um through the week um and um, uh, people like michael make uh dumb seo questions such a, a valuable resource um and their contribution is uh, highly valued uh, michael said uh, if the same uh, article will be published under multiple brands i would go with domain slash topic slash article and then canonicalize all domain slash brand slash topic slash article urls to the main one. Uh, if each brand will publish unique content, then I would go with domain slash brand slash topic slash article. And I've already done this for 22 years with great success on my largest personal um, website, which might have something to do with Lord of the Rings. Um, okay. Any other comments besides Michael's on, on this one? The only thing I'd say is if you can avoid canonicalizing and if you can have a single URL for each article, you're probably better off because canonicalization, it, it, it's not a 100% a, a sure deal. So generally speaking, you're probably going to be better off if you can figure out a, a, a unique architecture where everything has a single URL and nothing else. Um, but it's not really clear from the question I mean, Michael Martinez, he makes a good point about whether it's unique content on each brand or whether they're going to be duplicating content across brands. So it's like many things. It depends on what the content's going to be. And then this poor person is probably going to have all these different product managers, uh, you know, in her ear saying, I want this and I want that. So there's probably going to be politics involved with this also. I, I can think of um, other, well, I can't I, I can't actually say okay have a look at this site but I can I, I can think of many e-commerce type sites having this kind of structure you know blogs is Emporium and then all the different brands as part of the 
part of the structure, part of the architecture of the site. So, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing special here unless I'm misunderstanding this. Um, you know, retail type e-commerce sites can be, can be structured that way. Uh, and there wouldn't be anything wrong about that. Um, so I, I think perhaps uh, we, we could do with a, a follow-up question to actually uh, find out a bit more about what this is and whether there's a um, a wrinkle um, to this that I'm I'm not understanding. But it would seem to me that you know if if it's that kind of situation where. Uh, some kind of retail function is being given to a number of uh, another a number of brands well yes fine you know that that's that's all fine and dandy and all quite normal thank you david all right let's um wrap this one up uh, i think we've only got one more after this uh, but let's find out um Chris Green asked the question, should I change the metadata due to the corona crisis? Um, our very own Tim Kapper. Uh, um, <laughs> oh, no, no, pass on that. Um, should I change the metadata? Um, he said, hey, guys, one site we work with uh, uh, has some new short-term offer, free shipping on all orders due to the crisis. Now, the offer will likely last about two months maximum. I think that's optimistic. Um, he said, but uh, I was wondering uh, if it was worth updating our metadata, adding free shipping to order uh, to all orders, to meta descriptions, or is two months too short uh, to do so, uh, since uh, Google takes a while to update metadata? Michael Martinez again um, um, answered this one. He said uh, he would, but it's really a business decision, not an SEO um, decision. Yeah, I think I think I would be inclined to uh, to to have some some fun with the uh, with the meta description. Uh, there is a chance to to get the sales message across. Um, yeah, I, I would do it. Okay. All right, let's um, wrap this one up for uh, Chris Green. And yes, it's that time again. It's thank you for watching time. I would be remiss if I didn't thank um, people like uh, Michael Martinez, Michael Stricker, um people who uh, answer questions every day through the week on our dumb seo questions facebook group and uh, we are truly grateful for that and especially we're, we're grateful for the the uh, contribution of tim capper and uh, um david Rosam and richard hearn and uh, michael fisher kirshner uh, these people that turn up um, week after week uh, year after year i think we rolled out the first episode back in 2011 was that that be right 2011 would that be it oh, i can't remember um and uh, we're still here we thought we lost uh, tim to the uh, um <laughs> the virus <laughs> All right. So, well, look, we'll be back at the same time uh, uh, next week um, to do this uh, all again. Um, but for now, it's uh, good night and thank you very much. <laughs>